YouTube fam, it's your girl Leah back again with another video. In today's video, as you can see from the title, is me just going through the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, everything I know about living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, I made this video same time last year in 2020, pre-pandemic, and I decided now why not do another version of this post-pandemic just with kind of 2020 outlook, just taking into account everything that happened in 2020, looking at it from a 2021 perspective of everything I know. And again, everything I say in this video is my opinion of living in Charlotte, North Carolina. And in that video, I was doing my makeup up. It was a whole kind of dealio. Today's video, I'm just straight talking. Also, like I mentioned, everything I say in this video is my opinion. Now, my background is I grew up the next county over from Charlotte, North Carolina for all my formative years, age zero through 18. I was just the next county over, so I'm still a 704 girl, but I was not calling the queen city of Charlotte my home. Then I went off to college in Raleigh, North Carolina, so I lived in Raleigh, North Carolina for four years of my life before a moving down to Charlotte official like I lived in the county of Mecklenburg I lived in the city of Charlotte since 2012 so when I graduated from college my first job was here in Charlotte I moved down and so I have lived in Charlotte for my god it's been like eight and a half years now we're going on year nine of me living in Charlotte so I know a lot of these videos come from the perspective of people who maybe lived in another city like a New York a DC a Houston a Dallas a LA and then moved to Charlotte this is the perspective of a person who's lived near Charlotte lived in North Carolina in another city for a while and then moved officially to Charlotte so my perspective of other cities and being in other cities like a Miami Orlando a DC a New York is only as a visitor if I've only visited these metropolitan cities I've only kind of stayed like a week at a time in these cities I haven't lived officially paid rent in any of these other metropolitan cities but everything I say when I speak of comparisons to other cities will be having visited these cities I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions why do people call it the Queen City Charlotte is named after Queen Charlotte of Great Britain hundreds and hundreds of years ago Charlotte it was named after Queen Charlotte so it's the Queen city so i got my charlotte gear on and we're just gonna get started i'm gonna break it down from housing to dating to transportation to jobs to everything charlotte related and we're gonna start with housing housing is a big thing in charlotte and i've watched some of these videos from transplants from people again who are from the north and who moved down here from a chicago from a la again and move here and they always say housing is impeccable it's amazing the cost of living is so cheap homes are so cheap i've watched a video where a guy was like you can get a 1700 square foot home in the charlotte area for two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, and i was like I mean, where is that house? Let me know where about that house. But for us native people who've been here years and years and years, and again, I grew up the next county over, but my mom has worked in Charlotte since 1998. So we used to come to Charlotte all the time. I went to Carolina Place, South Park Mall, Eastland Mall, RIP Eastland Mall. But I would go to these malls every weekend. Every weekend we would come to Charlotte and go shopping, go out to eat, do all that stuff. So I've seen kind of how the city has changed over the last three years of my life I've seen places that existed that no longer exist like East Mall. so for me housing is expensive it's expensive to live here for what you get and I know like cities like Houston and Atlanta bigger metropolitan cities have a better housing market than we have here in Charlotte and it's just because we get those transplants who see oh my god this is a better city I'm not paying five hundred thousand dollars for one bedroom in New York I can get three bedrooms for five hundred thousand dollars here and Charlotte is taking a look at that they are noticing that we are getting a lot of transplants and the cost of living and the housing market for us native people is skyrocketing we haven't lived in a New York City and had experiences with those high prices we are just seeing the prices skyrocket here tick by tick year by year so you guys if you follow my channel for the last four years know I rented a home with my roommate I had a roommate for four years so I lived in my own apartment for two years had a roommate for four years while we lived in a home that would be considered roughly North Charlotte area. It was one literal street over from my apartment, but the zip code changed from 28262 to 28269. That one street, I think, put us in roughly North Charlotte category, although it still was right on the cusp of university area. So I looked up the Zillow price of that home. Now that home, 
again, you've watched my videos, you saw me living in that home. That was a 1400 square foot home, three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms at that time. Was Rent was very reasonable at that time. Rent when we first moved in for the two of us, about $1,100 to rent a home. Very beautiful home, very good space for us, split between two people. We were paying what, less than 600 each. She paid a little bit more because she had the master bedroom. But again, very affordable. Now I looked up the Zillow price of that home now. It is $225,000 and the rent is $1,600. $1,600 for the rent of that place that I moved out of two years ago. Two years ago, I moved out of that home because I got my job in South Carolina and I was like, I cannot keep making this drive. The drive was about an hour. And at the time of moving out, we were paying maybe $1,250. So we lived there four years, but the rent hadn't gone up crazy amount. We were maybe paying $1,275 for that home that we were renting, which was amazing. Now they're listing it for $1,600 for rent. Again, two years have gone by and the price has skyrocketed. But that house almost being a quarter of a million dollars and you only getting 1,400 square feet, it depends on where you're coming from, but to me, I think that house might be worth the low 200s. My current apartment is a two bedroom, one bathroom apartment. I pay a little less than 12, although the new apartments, if I was to move in right now, I think the price is like, 1300 almost so I got in at a really good time because again you would think the pandemic made things slow down here oh no things have gotten worse there have been headlines I subscribe to this newsletter in Charlotte called Charlotte Agenda and it's talked about how poor the market looks for housing for first-time home buyers in 2021 sellers this is a dream market you could put any sticker price on a home and people will buy it in the Charlotte area because the market for us buyers is so dwindled down like for us buyers right now it is not a buyer's market rent is okay like me paying twelve hundred dollars for this two-bedroom one bath a little under one thousand square foot that's not bad but if I try to buy a home I looked in the surrounding area so my complex has a housing neighborhood surrounding it home starting in the three hundred eighty thousand dollar range for three bedrooms two baths and all that so yeah when i compare it to an atlanta i follow so many atlanta realtors on instagram for some odd reason and i'll see amazing homes starting in the high 100s amazing homes starting in the low 200s i could not get that around here so the housing market as it pertains to buying a home it's crazy so for us natives they are boxing this out. I want to buy a home in 2021 in Charlotte, and it looks like that might not be my reality. I might have to be in one of the surrounding counties. There are counties surrounding Charlotte. There's Cabarrus, there's Gaston, there's Union, there's York, which is in South Carolina. A lot of people live in upper South Carolina and then drive up to Charlotte because it's like, quick like my drive to work is only 20 minutes and I live in Charlotte work in South Carolina so all of these other counties that's where a lot of people are having to migrate out so people are migrating out of Charlotte moving to the surrounding areas even if they work in Charlotte North Carolina just because the Charlotte market when it comes to owning a home is not the best renting it's a little bit you know it's not crazy crazy unless you get kind of closer to center city but you can find some affordable renting places if you just shop around you can just kind of find the best times don't move at a peak time like in august and all that maybe move at an off season now transportation i made this a point in my last video and i talked about transportation i said you know charlotte is not the best city when it comes to public transportation and i got a comment in that video that said i wish people would stop saying that y'all just don't understand the system it is bad I'm not gonna deny it in this video I'm not gonna ease up on it I'm going to say it's bad I googled it the news WSOC TV is our news station here put why Charlotte gets dismal raining on transit that's a headline from Charlotte another public headline about Charlotte Charlotte's ranked 2019's fourth worst city for public transportation we ranked 97th fourth worst four from the bottom which is hundred is the bottom we're the 97th when it comes to 
public transportation. That means there are 96 other cities in this whole um, United States that are better than us for public transportation. So no, I'm not going to renege on that from my last video. I know for some people, they understand it. They get our public transportation. We do have a bus system. Of course, we do have a light rail system, which to me isn't really the best comparably. It doesn't come all the way down here to, to South Charlotte to my area as it currently stands. It's kind of a university to uptown to South End type of a thing. So no, it's not the best light rail system. It is very convenient for like college students, people who do live in university. Back when I lived in university, it would have been perfect for when I actually worked uptown. We don't have like taxis. We do have like, you could, I mean, of course, taxi cab services, but I never see a taxi on the street. This is not like a New York. We do not have the best public transportation. You're going to need a car if you live here. I know there are some circumstances where maybe you have your license revoked, where you've had like, where you can't physically drive and all that. I would definitely say, lean on kind of the public assistance travel. I always see Cash does have like where they can pick up elderly and all those type of people and they'll have like kind of a sign. I think there's one person in my neighborhood who takes advantage of that. They are disabled. So there's disability services that do provide that kind of transportation for you here. But when it comes to the busing, all that, no, if we're ranked the fourth worst, there are other cities. And again, when I said it in my last video, I compared it to like if you're coming from a New York City. I've been to New York several times. The first time I went, um, Uber wasn't as big as it is now, but the first time I went, I walked out of every building that I was in, raised my hand up, and I was able to get a ride to go to where I needed to go. Here, if I stepped out my apartment and raised my hand, my neighbors would be like, girl, what you doing? This, put your, hand, put your hand down. No, that's easy transportation to me. For me to be able to walk out of a building, I walked out of a Macy's, I walked out of my hotel, and all I did was raise my hand. I wasn't standing outside for minutes upon minutes. I literally, a yellow or green cab came up to me immediately. I took the subway when I was in New York. Got from, I think we went to Har from Harlem or we went from Manhattan to Harlem. Easy peasy, easy peasy. So I don't think I've ever taken a bus in New York City, but I saw plenty of buses there. I had a best friend who lived in DC. DC, her apartment was right by a metro station. She lived in Northeast DC, right by a metro station. When I think about Charlotte, we don't have anything like that where it's that easy peasy. The public transportation system has a way where you can map out your ride, so you can plan your trip. So wherever you're trying to go, they will tell you how to get there from your exact location to where your final destination is. So I put from my home right now to my old job. I used to work uptown Charlotte. I didn't even put my current job. I'll tell you guys what it would be for my current job. But for me to get to my old job, which is in uptown Charlotte, right there by that Bank of America building and all those beautiful things you see on the photos for the skyline of Charlotte, it would take me from my current home one hour and 57 minutes if I took public transportation. So it would take me seven minutes to walk to my closest bus stop. So that's where my closest bus stop is. It's eight, seven minutes from there. So I would have to get on at 6.40 a.m. on Monday and I could get to work at 8.40 37 using public transportation using the cat system one hour and 57 minutes almost two hours to get to work for me which will be a drive of about to my old job about 18 minutes from here 18 minute driving hour 57 if I relied on public transportation. And I get it, some people have to rely on public transportation. Car is a luxury that I definitely do not take for granted, but I know that two hours is a long period of time. Now, to get to my current job, because I didn't even wanna start with my current job because I know I work in South Carolina and I know the North Carolina to South Carolina public transit isn't all there. But for me, to get to my job currently where I work, it would take me three hours and 36 minutes if I relied on public transportation for me. And again, this is the bus to get from me walking to the bus. I'd have to take the 51 bus to the 17 bus to the 82 bus. I have to walk for a total of 21 minutes. So walking to the bus stop and walking from the bus stop to my job, it would take me three hours and 36 minutes. And that's with no traffic, nothing going on. That is not a great public transportation system. So no, I'm not gonna renege on what I said in my last video. Our public transportation system is ranked 97th in the country for a reason. Three hours and 36 minutes for me to get to my current job when it only takes me 20 minutes in my car to get there, 20 minutes, no bueno. So again, public transportation here is not the best. 
So when it comes to flight transportation too, we are a hub for American Airlines. American Airlines is a huge hub here. We're one of like what, I think Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania, somewhere in Pennsylvania has another hub. Charlotte, North Carolina is a hub. So we have a plenty of American Airlines flights that come through here. Delta, looking it up, Delta we only have flights that go to Atlanta, Detroit, Minnesota, New York, Salt Lake City. So we only have a few. We are like a connector for Delta. Delta, you know, always has to go through it. Atlanta a lot of times here. We always got to go through Atlanta. We always got to go through Chicago or something. We always got to go through another city. Somebody who is trying to get your Delta miles up, we're not the best for Delta. Although I see them currently building out the terminals. We have a few flights from Frontier for Denver, LA, Orlando, and Philadelphia. JetBlue, we only have one flight that leaves out of Charlotte for JetBlue right now, and that's to Boston. Southwest Airlines is kind of newer to us in a market sense. Spirit Airlines, that's newer to us as well. We do have for Spirit and then United um, just goes to Chicago. So, and when it comes to airlines, if you're flying out of Charlotte, a lot of the times you're gonna be flying out from American Airlines. A lot of my flights are American and I'll have an occasional Delta flight. Like I've taken Delta a few times and I definitely say our flights are way more expensive than other cities. Like I've, I've done the reverse like lookup of a flight. Like dang, if I go to this place, oh man, it's so cheap flying out of here. So I can also say Charlotte flights are a lot more expensive than flying out of another city like at Atlanta or like even the Florida cities or New York, of course. And New York, a lot of their flights are a lot cheaper than flying out of Charlotte. So when it comes from a flight perspective, transportation, we could do a little bit better. Now demographics, from a demographic standpoint, what is the racial composition of this city? So according to the 2010 census, we are 45.1% white or Caucasian, 35% black or African American, 13.1% Hispanic or Latin American, 5% Asian, 0.5% American Indian, and then of course 6.8% other races and all that. Racial composition wise, I'd say 35% of people look like me. Do I feel like I see it in the city? I do. I think from a housing standpoint as well too, like when I was in the university area and I was in my home that uh, we were renting, but I think everybody else around us was kind of owning. There was a lot more diversity in my neighborhood, like homeowners in my neighborhood around me were very much so a diverse plethora. Whereas in my neighborhood right now, apartments, a lot of the apartments I've lived in have been just diverse just because a lot of times apartment renting is a lot more diverse than home ownership in our area if that makes sense so my building we have black we have white we have Hispanic we have all kinds of races in this building when I go outside of this building and I walk Winnie I go on my walks around the neighborhood again like I said there's homes around here I don't see as much diversity in the home ownership realm and that sucks that really does suck I do like my neighborhood in the sense that I feel the walkability of it is great I think I feel comfortable walking in my neighborhood I've never Never, you know felt kind of nervous I think we have a lot of sidewalks over here people always ask you know which racism there we are in the south still like Charlotte North Carolina is still a southern state not only the North fool you we're still a southern state so have I felt overt racism in here no I felt overt racism I'm being called the n-word in South Carolina you know plenty of times when I was little like I we would go to South Carolina too all the time and I've been called the n-word in a derogatory way an hour outside of here so yes in an hour you're probably gonna face some form of not overt but covert racism it, I think is alive everywhere we still are a red state although the city and the metropolitan areas of the state if you look at the maps are always kind of more you know liberal the Charlottes the Raleigh's the Astros the Greensboro still see the trucks with the confederate flags i was just driving down the road yesterday and i saw you know the confederate flags waving from the back of the truck and it was like it, it was a pickup truck now you don't see that all the time here again because we are a big transplant city so you have people coming from the north but you still have the people who were born and raised here so i definitely say the demographics the numbers you probably are leaning towards oh that's not bad that seems pretty diverse we are diversifying ourselves but i think while we're diversifying we're not culturing ourselves and what i mean is i was in clubhouse the other day and it was a bunch of Charlotteans. We were in that room just chatting and we were talking about how because we are getting a lot of transplants, we are gentrifying the city a lot and we're taking some of the authenticness about some of our food, some of our restaurants 
out of the city, which is concerning. Like I love a good authentic place, but I'm not getting that a lot. I'm getting a lot of Sabor Latin Grill or a lot of these places that are chains that are across the city that are taking over, which some of them are good, but like there's nothing like an authentic Caribbean place. There's nothing like the authenticness of these places. So I say, all that to say, with the diversity, I think there's a lot of commercialization of some of our food and our restaurant industry. Don't think that you're gonna come here and see the cultures all around you. You might go to East Charlotte and West Charlotte a little bit and go to those pockets and those one boulevards and those one streets that have been able to hang on. But for the most part, with everything that's been going on, I can definitely say the gentrification of a lot of our streets and a lot of our restaurants and a lot of our areas is slowly and sometimes fast taking over now when it comes to networking dating making friends what do I think about that now when it comes to Charlotte and comparably to when I lived in Raleigh where I lived in Raleigh for four years but when I lived in Raleigh I was a college student so I was broke I lived close to campus and I wasn't really enjoying the full body of Raleigh but articles have said that Raleigh is one of the best cities it's one of the top cities for dating and I, I don't know if it was just for the black community but I, it might have been overall but it was one of the better cities for dating. Now Charlotte wasn't on that list. Charlotte wasn't really on that list because I don't think when you come to Charlotte, I don't think the market is as, as, as strong for dating. And again, this is my opinion. There are probably people who are watching this video right now who said, I moved to Charlotte, I found my husband within two hours. I, I moved to Charlotte, I met my husband here. I'd say for me, and again, I've lived here for nine years, the dating market for me has shown itself to be that I've recently decided I am going to start dating older. Like that's what I, like I was like, maybe my age, you know, range isn't, you know, the best, maybe older, maybe high, you know, upper thirties. That might be my range. So there's a lot of good single men who are upper thirties, no children and have a good job here. And I was like, that is a great thing but yet uh, so many of them still want to be bachelors. Like so many people come like, I know a great friend. I have a great friend for you. And they'll introduce me to their great friend who they're like, he's single, he's 37, it's fine. And he's like out of the job and all that. And I'm like, perfect, it's perfect. He has a great job, he's single. Well, you know, what's the issue there? I found that a lot of these men prefer to be single. Like they're not looking, like their friends will try to set them up, but they're like, I'm good, I'm not like looking for a wife, like I'm okay about this bachelor life. I think because of the city vibes or the cityness of Charlotte, we're the biggest city, the largest city in North Carolina. Raleigh is the capital of North Carolina, but it's not even the biggest city. Charlotte is the biggest city of North Carolina. I think we're the fastest moving, if you wanna say that. We have all the fun and exciting things. Men, a lot of the time, successful men are, you know, kind of about that, I wanna enjoy it. I wanna enjoy it, maybe I settle down at four 45, maybe 50, maybe never. And so I found that a lot more than the Raleigh vibe. Raleigh, of course I dated in Raleigh. I was in college. It was, you know, college dating. You do that. I had boyfriends and stuff like that. So yeah, Raleigh, it was a lot easier, but I think Raleigh's a better community just because it is not as fast paced. It's not as fast paced. There's a lot more neighborhoods. It had a family vibe. Like I always thought that maybe I would live here in Charlotte for like these years and then move up to Raleigh when I was ready to have a family and, do, and settle down. Now I just feel like Charlotte's my forever home, but Raleigh always has that vibe of like family togetherness, you know, slower paced. And I think because it's slower place and you have so many people you probably work with who are married and have wives and all that it makes you a little bit feel like you want to settle down whereas here I think there's a lot of single people like all my friends who live here are single now I have a couple of married friends who've been married but they didn't meet their spouse here they met them in like Atlanta or somewhere else like they met somewhere else and then they as a couple moved to Charlotte I don't have a lot of friends who came to Charlotte single met their spouse here and then got married I wouldn't even call Charlotte fast pace comparably but I think the mentality is that Charlotte is the the most fast pace that you're gonna get for out of North Carolina, South Carolina type of a deal that, hey, I gotta be a mover shaker. I can't be settled down in no home. That's for the Raleigh, Cary, Durham type folks. I gotta be out here. And so yeah, I'll say when it comes to weather, we have seasons here. We have seasons, that's one thing I love about North Carolina. We have winter, fall, spring, and summer, and you see them, and it's beautiful when you see the seasons. Now, if you have allergies, it's a killer, it's a pain. But I didn't have to go through it a lot last year because again, we were indoors, all of that. But if you do go outside, be aware that the pollen seasons are crazy. 
crazy here but the like seeing the foliage seeing the trees having trees like i've seen a lot of new yorkers come down here and just be amazed at all the trees like and it won't even be a foresty area or a tree line area i'm just like if you are impressed by these trees go out a little bit to the other surrounding counties you'll see trees for days so we do have a lot of greenery and the greenery changes and it's beautiful when it comes to like hurricanes we don't get the full effects of the hurricanes like they hit the coast like they'll hit wilmington and myrtle beach and all that stuff and they'll get over here we'll have the like extreme rain sometimes a tree will fall or something of that sort but we don't get the elements of snowstorms the huge snowstorms that the, the upper northern states get we don't have them as readily here we do get snow occasionally although this last 2020 as i'm spending here filming 2021 we have not had snow hit but sometimes we do have snow hit like it normally hits like a january february type time frame so i might be speaking a little too soon but sometimes we get snow some seasons we can go the whole year without getting snow so again it just kind of depends now career career is a big one because if you're moving to charlotte you're thinking about moving you're gonna think about what are my career opportunities what are my perspectives on career now i think i said in my last video i see a lot of these videos where they're like charlotte market sucks charlotte market sucks Charlotte was the only market hiring when I got out of college. Like I wanted to stay in Raleigh when I graduated from college. I really wanted to stay in Raleigh so bad. Like all my friends were staying there. Some were still in college and some had just gotten jobs outside of college that were in Raleigh. So I cried when I had to move to Charlotte. Honestly, I was, yes, I did not want to come back to Charlotte. I came back kicking and screaming because the jobs were here. Like they posted on EPAC. I went to NC State, go Wolfpack. Um, they posted a job on EPAC. It said Raleigh on the thing but it actually was Charlotte. I came down here and interviewed for the job. It was a rotational program. And I was just like, near graduation, like if anything else comes up, like I will quit this job. I will tell them I can't come. But I didn't get anything in Raleigh. So I did have to move down here. Best decision ever though. I loved my first job. I loved the people that I met here. But at the time of me graduating in 2012, Charlotte was a good market for jobs and all that. I can definitely say I've had three jobs in my I guess adult career past 2012. My my first job, I worked uptown Charlotte, now I work in South Carolina. I've enjoyed all my jobs. Charlotte has seven Fortune 500 companies in this city. So we have Bank of America, Honeywell, Nuker, Lowe's, Duke Energy, Sonic Automotive, and Bright House Financial. Those are seven headquartered companies that are headquartered in Charlotte that are on the Fortune 500 list, but we have so many others. We have Harris Teeter, which is a huge chain down here. Their headquarters is in this area, Snyder. Lance, if you know the crackers and all that, Bojangles, Food Lion, as well as we have a lot of clothing chains. Belk was founded the next county over and the headquarters in Charlotte, Cato's, Rack Room Shoes. So we have a lot of big headquarters. Although we have all that and we have Bank of America and all that, healthcare is still the number one industry in here with Atrium Health and Novant Health. So healthcare is where the most jobs are. So when it comes to the unemployment rate of Charlotte, and I looked up the statistics on this so I could be you know giving you the accurate information pre-pandemic so february 29th 2020 i'll say it was right before everything shut down everything went down the unemployment rate here in charlotte was 3.5 percent so very low unemployment rate um as compared to the nation at that time charlotte was doing really well now at the peak of the pandemic so may 31st 2020 the unemployment rate was 13.9 percent everything just went to crap after the pandemic so yes that was the highest rate that i could find on the chart so where we currently stand at in terms of unemployment we are at 6.7 percent unemployment rate for charlotte north carolina which is kind of on par with the national average i think even post looking up the statistics i saw it at 6.5 or 6 point something so a little bit lower than the national average so unemployment rate is kind of lower here but the major complaint i hear from people is okay yeah a lot of people got jobs here people have jobs but you're not talking about underemployment so what underemployment means is you have a job but it's just below what you believe your skill set is so you believe like you took went to college for four years you might have got your master's and you believe you're supposed to be making one hundred sixty thousand dollars, but you could only find a job that was paying eighty thousand dollars so you're kind of underemployed in your mind and same thing goes for if you went to school got your bachelor's and you think you're supposed to come out of school making sixty thousand dollars but you only making like twenty four thousand or thirty thousand dollars you're underemployed you do have a job so you don't fit into these unemployment numbers but you're underemployed 
And some people are always saying, yeah, you can find a job, but it won't be what you're looking for and all that. And I always say to that, you know, I, I come from a world of HR and talent acquisition. Of course, have a job, work a job. You got to put food on the table, but always keep looking, always be enhancing your skills, always be looking for something. I do get an email every Sunday from the Charlotte Agenda. Charlotte Agenda is a newsletter, which if you are from Charlotte or you live in Charlotte or anything, you need to be subscribed to this just to get a, a look on the know. But they always post every Sunday what jobs are hiring. So they always have on Sundays who's hiring. So these are the 21 companies or the 21 positions right now that are hiring um, and they'll do this every week of course check LinkedIn and indeed and all of this and during the pandemic I can honestly say there was not a great market for my particular field talent acquisition was really one of the least hireable jobs during the pandemic because people weren't hiring like why do we need recruiters when we're not hiring people. So during the pandemic, I was of course nervous for my job, but also nervous that if I did lose my job, the market was tough. Like the market looks terrible for talent acquisition. I would even just check just to be like, hey, make sure everything looks good for talent acquisition partners and nothing would come up. Now I can type in talent acquisition partners and there'll be a few jobs that'll come up that'll, and I'm like, whew, okay, the market's better. The market is definitely better than what it was back in May of 2020. Now, when it comes to events and all that, a lot has been shut down due to the pandemic. But before that, we have Carolina Panthers. We have the Charlotte Hornets. We have the Charlotte Checkers when it comes to hockey. But NASCAR is huge here. Charlotte is the home of NASCAR. The NASCAR headquarters are here. So NASCAR is big if you're into car racing. And Peter Thomas from Real House of Atlanta keep opening clubs and bars and sports things here. So Peter Thomas is here if you're into that. We have amusement parks like Carowinds. Carowinds is a big theme park that is on the line of North Carolina and South Carolina. So half the park is in North Carolina, half the park is in South Carolina. And it's so cool because you'll stand in one line and they'll be like, you're in both states at the same time. So you'll be in North Carolina and South Carolina if you just stand in the right spot. So again, we do have a lot of things here you know, in comparison to a New York and a Washington DC, we don't have the happy hours. We don't have happy hours. There's no time in the state where you can legally serve alcohol for a cheaper price during a time frame. So we might have happy days where they'll be like, Wednesdays, you can get $6 well drinks or whatever, but you cannot legally sell alcohol for cheaper during a specific time frame like you can maybe in a DC. You can't serve alcohol to anybody pre, I think it's noon on Sunday. So so if you think you're going to go to 11 a.m. brunch and get you a drink, you're not going to. You're not going to. If you think you're going to go into a food line and get you a wine at 11.30, 11.45 a.m., you just need to get that thing started. You need to get some champagne for your mimosas you're making at home. You cannot legally buy it in the store. I have forgotten that before. Like, I've been in a store before. It's only happened once because I normally can just remember these things. But I've gone to a store before. I just wanted to get some champagne. It was like 11 again on a Sunday. It's like you know, the day has dawned. He was like, sorry, I can't check this out. So I had to wait like five minutes. Like it was literally like 11.55. He held it and then I had to put all my other stuff in the car. I came back in and then bought it later. And it's like, uh, the rules here, we are very much so dry state in comparison to other states. But there are no places right now that I, you know, bottomless mimosas like that. There used to be this place, Zeta Jane's, that I went to one good time and they had bottomless mimosas. They do not even have to do that anymore. So bottomless mimosas, bottomless Bloody Mary bottomless floors and margaritas that's not really a thing a lot of the times here you might find one little place that might still be doing it but there's not a plenty when it comes to here so North Carolina really wants you to be as sober as possible when you really just trying to turn up turn up so nightlife compared to other cities like I love going to New York I love getting some apps getting some drinks going out going ham I love going to DC you just want to get drinks and drinks and drinks and places stay open a lot later North Carolina and we closing it down so again that's all that I have to say about living in Charlotte now if you found this video helpful give it a big thumbs up even if you didn't still give it a big thumbs up we want all the love and support over here on this channel make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss anything I do over here and make sure that you're following me on Instagram at leolamon89 so you can see the crazy life I live here in Charlotte or the not so crazy life you check it out and you find out for yourself and I will see you in my next video thank you so much for watching bye yeah. Girl, make you want to be business. That's me.